All right, new function, absolute value function. We're going to talk about the characteristics of absolute value. Now, absolute value is a number's distance from zero. We talked about this earlier in the year, but uh, just a real quick revisit. Absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So we always talk about how distance can't be negative. So a number can be zero units away from zero, but it can't be negative five units away from zero just because it's gone to the left on the number line. So negative 10 is 10 units away from zero. Positive 10 is 10 units away from zero. So the absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So real quick, what I've picked is some x values to help me find out what the graph of this absolute value function is going to look like. Again, the parent function is right here. And we are going to plug in these x values and see what we get back for our y values. Well, what's the absolute value of negative 3? Well, it's 3 units from 0. What's the absolute value of negative 2? Positive 2. What's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. What's the absolute value of 0? 0. What's the absolute value of 1? 1. What's the absolute value of 2? 2. What's the absolute value of 3? 3. So now I've got a, a set of points that I can use for my parent function for absolute value. Now, interesting, you can see that there is some symmetry here. And with this symmetry, you can start to maybe uh, remember a little bit about what parabolas look like. And the absolute value function will be similar, though not the same. Um, you can also see that when we start to graph this, it does have a little bit of a linear feel to it. Negative 3, 3. Negative 2, positive 2. Negative 1, positive 1. 0, 0. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And you've got this V shape here for your absolute value graph. It is symmetrical about the Y axis. So that does lead us into uh, one of our characteristics we'll talk about a little bit. But um, it has the both arrows heading in the same direction as far as the y values are concerned so that's similar to a parabola but again v shaped not u shaped so the absolute value function is slightly different all right let's go through these characteristics really quickly the domain that is as far left as i can go to as far right as i can go with my x values well these arrows indicate that there is no stopping so i'm going to continue all the way from negative infinity up to positive infinity now something I haven't emphasized before on the previous videos is that when we're doing interval notation we're talking about numbers on on the number lines whether it's the x-axis or the y-axis and I use brackets to indicate that I actually touch that um, value but because infinity is this idea not necessarily an exact number we're gonna use parentheses to represent that I don't actually ever get to negative infinity and positive infinity. Now that's kind of an out there idea because you're like, what do you mean I never actually get there? Well, negative infinity and positive infinity represent beyond what we can count. So this, this idea that it goes past what we understand as far as numbers, but we know that they still exist out there. We just can't count that high or that low. And so the parentheses represents not a point, but the fact that we never actually get to that x value to be able to touch it with our function um, then the range would be uh, a similar idea to our parabola in that I do have a minimum at 0 for my y values but I seem to increase to positive infinity here and here so I actually do have a point at 0 so there's the brackets that we've been used to using but with infinity we never actually get there so we have a parenthesis for that uh, we don't have any asymptotes because we don't have a line that I get really close to but never actually touch. So none as far as those are concerned. Then we're going to slide up here a little bit and talk about end behavior as well as our intercepts, y-intercepts as well. So we'll slide over to number three with the x-intercept. Do I ever touch the x-axis? Yes, right there at 0, 0, I touch at the origin. Do I ever touch the y-axis? Yes, I do at 0, 0. I have a minimum in this case. The origin acts like a vertex for a parabola. It acts like our minimum because there are no y values. There are no points below that point right there. Uh, in behavior, how does this thing behave as I approach negative infinity and positive infinity? So as x approaches negative infinity, that's way out to the left, 
as I get way out here off my screen, the graph is continuing to head up, 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 up. So that means Y is headed toward positive infinity as I go way out to the left. As I go way out to the right, as X approaches positive infinity, where is my graph headed? Well, it's heading up. So that's toward positive infinity as well. Okay, so that's my end behavior, what I'm doing out near negative and positive infinity. All right, even odd neither. Well, this thing is symmetrical about the Y axis. I am, I have mirror images on either side of the Y axis, and that indicates that we are dealing with an even function. Did I ever have to pick up my pencil to graph this? I did not. So we are dealing with a continuous function. And those are important characteristics to show about our absolute value function. Now I'm going to graph uh, one of these examples with you that have some transformations um, being performed on our parent function of absolute value of x. I've got the parent function in purple there, so the original points that I can use to work with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of apply these effects of these two translations um, onto this parent function, and then we're going to go through the characteristics quickly. So this is telling me that I'm going to translate... that I'm going to translate right to and up one. So I'm going to take each of these points that I have from the parent function and I'm going to translate right to and up one. So each of these points we're going to do that right to, up one, right to, up one, right to, up one, right to, up one, right to, up one. And you can see the same V just translated right and up. So now we're going to do the domain and range really quickly. Well, just because I moved to the right and up, none of my x value changes as I continue to head to the left and up and to the right and up. So I still have a negative infinity to positive infinity domain. My range seems to have moved up one. So instead of zero being my minimum, I actually have a one as a y value as my smallest y value that I use. I actually touch that point, but then I head toward positive infinity. No asymptote still. As I do touch this line, there's no like approaching a curve and curving away. Um, so none still for my asymptotes. X-intercepts. I never actually touch the x-axis. If you look at the pink graph, there is nowhere that I touch the x-axis, so we would have none in this case. My y-intercept, I touch right here. So my y-intercept would be at 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 3 for my y-intercept. I do have a minimum still as I haven't reflected over. I have this uh, point here that's acting like my vertex is at the bottom of my graph. My end behavior as I approach negative infinity and positive infinity, I'm behaving very similar to the parent function. So as x approaches negative infinity, my Y values still continue to approach positive infinity. They go up. And as X approaches positive infinity, that means I'm going way out to the right. My Y values are going up. So that means I'm approaching positive infinity. Um, now that I've translated to the right, I've moved away from the Y axis. So no longer does the Y axis go straight through the middle of my graph. No longer if I... Can I flip over the y-axis and have a mirror image on either side? So that eliminates this even idea. Um, and I never could and I never have uh, have the ability to flip diagonally over the origin and have a mirror image on either side. So that throws out my odd. So now I'm left with the neither. And that's going to happen. When you, when you translate away from the origin and the y-axis, you're going to move away from this idea of odd and even functions. I never had to pick up my, my pencil when I was graphing this, so I'm still dealing with a continuous function. And that is, uh, that is kind of a, how I would graph, um, uh, a, a new function using the parent function of absolute value. Okay, to graph these new absolute values with uh, reflection taking place, um, notice I've identified that here for you to make sure you remember that, that this is what's happening in the equation. I'm going to do this graph for you real quick. Notice that I'm affecting y values here and here. So we're going to affect the y values. Here we go. 
I'm up to positive 2, so that's going to, if I flip the sign, that's going to change me to negative 2. And then I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. So this is the new version of that point. I'm at positive 1, now I'm at negative 1. Up 3. 1, 2, 3. That's the new version of that point. I'm at 0. Flip the sign. 0, up 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm at 1, negative 1. Up 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm at 2, negative 2, up 1, 2, 3. And you can see the reflection that has taken place in green as I draw it in for you. Okay, domain and range really quickly as X goes way out to the left and way out to the right. Um, with these arrows, that means I just keep going so that I'm thinking about infinity at that place. So I'm going from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I don't actually ever touch those points, so I'm going to put parentheses instead of brackets. My range seems to have a maximum value this time instead of a minimum. The maximum seems to be right here at 3. So I put that over here to the right for the highest number. But it does continue to go down, 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 down. So negative infinity would be where I'm headed as far as the lowest y values. And the highest y value, and I actually get there, is 3. No asymptotes for absolute values. And um, a tricky thing here is, is recognizing that I'm going to have two I'm going to have two as, um, x intercepts now and they're going to be here and they're going to be here forgive my my art um, but these will be my two x intercepts as I continue on this pattern and so that means that I'm going to have x intercepts at negative three zero and I'm going to have x intercepts at positive three zero again I cross the x axis at both of these places do I have a y-intercept this time? I do. I go 0, 3 for this. And I have a maximum this time as my vertex is at the top, not the bottom. My end behavior is what's happening way on the outsides of this function. So as x approaches negative infinity, that's way out to the left. Where's my graph pointing? Well, it's pointing down. So y is headed to negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, that's way out to the right, Where's this graph pointing? It's pointing down. So that's headed to negative infinity as well. All right. This is still symmetrical about the y-axis. I could draw that y-axis right down the middle, go through the vertex, and have mirror images on either side of it, left and right. So we're still an even function at this point, and I never had to pick up my pencil to graph this. I'm running out of time on this video, so I just want to do the graph for example four with you. It's got a vertical stretch times two and a translation left. Um, so I want to just go ahead and take care of that. I've got the parent function on here for you, and I'm just going to do the graph with you. So each of the y values is going to be multiplied by 2, and then we're going to slide left two units. So my y value currently is at 2, times 2 takes me to 4, and then I go left 2, and that's the new version of this point. My current y value is at 1, multiplied by 2 is 2, and then I go left 1, 2 units here. And you could probably already see how it's going to, it's getting stretched and becoming a little bit more narrow. Uh, I was at zero multiplied by two is zero. Slide left two, one, two. And this is the new version of the vertex. I was at one multiplied by two is two. Go left two and I'm here. I was at two multiplied by two and I'm at four. Left two is here. And now in orange is the new absolute value graph. And you can see that I've done the transformations of a vertical stretch and a translation. And you can still do domain range and all these characteristics to the right using these points the way we have previously in the video.